Okay, yay, we're live. All right, hey everybody, welcome to the Team Set It Off weekly call. And I'm super excited everyone's on here if you're on live and if you're watching the recording, thank you so much for watching the recording. Um, today we are going to talk about uh, a vital behavior that's super, super important. And because we have so many new people coming onto our team, and also because I recently went back to basics myself with the five-step invitation process, this is, whenever, I have to say, whenever it feels complicated or overwhelming as a Beachbody coach, it's good to just go back to basics, to peel off the layers and to forget about all the fancy stuff and just go back to what's going to move yourself and your business forward and also help change the lives of people that you know or have yet to meet. And that is inviting. Inviting is the most important step. Without inviting, you will not do anything in this business. As far as helping other people, and um, moving your business forward. So without further ado, let's just kind of get into it. I'm gonna change it just to me. Okay, cool. So um, is everyone familiar with the five-step invitation? You can just nod or, or go like this or go like this or go like this. <laughs> so I'm going to demystify it for you right now. This is my best tip this is my best tip that anything you want to know how to do you have at your fingertips you do not have you do not need anyone's permission to be successful as a beach body coach so I'm going to show you my secrets and I told you my secrets in the last team call that we did live but for those of you that weren't on I'm going to I'm going to show you my secrets so hold down Time to show you my secrets. Okay, so, oh hey, that, look, hey, there's our page, hi. Okay, so you're gonna go to teambeachbody.com. For some of you, this is uh, gonna be a training lesson because you haven't even enrolled yet. <laughs> Noella. Um, so you would log into your back office and hopefully you know how to do that. It's just your coach online office. It appears there. And so in your coach online office, don't look at my lack of success club points. Don't judge me. Um, there is this amazing tab called training, news and training. And so you can click training. And wouldn't you know, it has all this fantabulous stuff as far as getting started if you're a coach and then all these different bullet points as far as what your rank is. So the one that I want to turn your attention to is the training library. In the training library, ta-da, you can find all of these amazing resources that'll help make your life so much easier. So there's the business activity tracker, you can do coach follow-up tracker, customer follow-up tracker, all that good stuff, all the stuff that you already know. But I, we're gonna talk about inviting. And so this is right here. Look at this huge tab for inviting. And there's, you can even watch like a video replay of how someone would invite someone as a coach, how someone would invite someone as a customer. But we're just gonna focus on the customer. And they even have great additional resources as far as, um, what questions to ask when you get to a certain step. So let's look at the customer one. So this, there, there are five steps. In the first step, you are going to send out your invitation. Now, this is not set in stone. Like they give you an example, so it says sample invitation message, but this is, it's all up to you. It's all up to what sounds and feels best to you. So the idea behind our first vital behavior, invite, 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 is attract. So that means posting on your social media consistently, and your business activity tracker will help you figure out what types of posts. But it should be, you should be documenting your fitness journey every single day. And I know it seems like it's overwhelming, like, oh, it's just another sweaty selfie of me. Well, Tell a story with that sweaty selfie. Tell people how you felt, you know, 
after your workout or before your workout or both. You know, don't just be like, got it done today. Like that doesn't do anything for anybody. Add some value. Tell a story. Tell something about your past. Be creative. If you need ideas on how to be more vulnerable and share your story, an awesome resource is Brene Brown. And you spell her name B-R-E-N-E, -E, Brown. Like, not every post you have to do has to be, like, super deep, and it's, like, your deep, dark secrets. But I'm just saying, sharing more of you and your realness, and especially for some of you that are, like, you're recommitting to your journey after falling off, like, that sweaty selfie of you being, like, I'm back on the bandwagon. This is how I was feeling. This is how I want to feel, you know, and I'm, I'm ready to do it. So... That, that portion of attracting is, you know, sharing your fitness journey, sharing the fact that you are being proof the products work, but then also just, it's like your own reality show. You know what I mean? Because it's like the, it's like the analogy of if you were walking downtown somewhere and, and you were window shopping, right? If someone had blacked out windows, you'd probably be like, uh, that's an adult store or that is something that I don't need to be inside of, right? Like if the windows are all blacked out, you're kind of like turned off, right? You're like, uh, I don't really want to go in there. But if you walk up in front of a business that looks very inviting, it looks super cute. It's like you like a couple t-shirts you see in there or whatever you're looking for. You, you're like attracted to it, right? You want to go inside and see what else they have to offer. That is the way I want you to think of your Facebook. It's the way I want you to think of your Instagram, you know, or whatever social media platforms you're using. It should be a way for you to tell people in like seven seconds because that's the attention span of a United, someone living in the United States now, an average adult, their attention span is about seven seconds. And, and you know this to be true, right? When you're scrolling your Facebook, you're like, scroll, 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 right? So if you don't have something that captures them, especially if you're sending somebody a friend request or, you know, like they're going to look at your cover photo. They're going to look at your profile picture. They're going to scroll a couple of your posts, which should be public right? It should be public. You shouldn't need like a secret access code to get into this store, right? What's the password? Like, no, it should just be public. Everybody should be able to see it. And they should be able to tell that you are a coach, but not like, not like a it works person or like, uh, what's the other stuff? Like the unique people, you know what I'm talking, you, you've seen the ones that you're like, I won't be like that person. Not like those people. Right. All the times that all y'all tell me, I don't you, I, like, I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to be a salesperson. They should be able to go on your page and tell that you work out, that you eat healthy and that you probably help other people and that you look like a happy person. Right. Like, and you, and you look like a real person and you're not just like an infomercial. <laughs> like I should scroll your Facebook and it'd be like, you know, stock images of autumn calories and all that kind of stuff. It should be you. It should be your face. It should represent you. So that is the part of attracting. Like, that's the first step. And, and it's easy to get sucked into that because that can take a lot of time if, you, if you're not familiar with it or you're like me and your posts sometimes take you 30 minutes, <laughs> right? Like, set a timer for yourself. Say 10 minutes to make a post and then get it done and be over with it. And if you have a couple typos or spelling errors, whatever, right? So then once you've attracted people, you're going to connect with people. And so th this is all before you do the invite. So, I mean, this is, this, is, this is how I've been thinking of it, okay? So you connect with people, and these are people that are in your warm market, aka your friends, your family, and the people that they know. So you could spend 10 minutes a day, put a timer on, and you could go to your friends list, and you could go click on your friends Facebook, and then you can go look at people that you have mutual friends with or that you see somebody and they kind of look familiar to you. You could do this with your high school friends. You could do this with old coworkers, but aim to add like five people a day and like write their names down. So you can track it in a notebook. You can track it in an Excel spreadsheet, whatever works for you, but make it a point and, and you can do less or you can do more, but don't go to Facebook jail. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Five is my golden number of how many people that I want to add to my network. You know, because that way you might know this person from somewhere or they might be someone that you don't quite know yet. But at least you'll open up this door. If they accept your friend request, you immediately have an in. 
and you can go, hey, thanks for accepting my friend request. You look really familiar. Or you could like go Facebook, stop them for like 30 seconds and go see what they're posting about if they have some kids or you have something in common, something to bond you so that when you connect with them, you can go, hey, so-and-so, oh my gosh, love your pictures of your cute kids or like, oh wow, little Johnny's grown up so much. You know, what's new with you? And then, ta-da, you're in connecting. So write this, form, or write this acronym down, which you should be writing these things down. I know I talk really fast, but hopefully you have a pen and paper because successful people take notes. Shalene Johnson once told me that, and I always take notes. So you should take notes too, um, or type them or whatever you want to do. But your next step is to form this person. So this is small talk. And for someone like me, who is very, very, like I, I am a self-proclaimed awkward person. Like I don't know how to do small talk. My husband is fantastic at it and I'm very awkward. I'm like, hey, how's it going? They're like, good. You? And I'm like, good. And I don't know what else to say. <laughs> so this has taken me some time to learn how to small talk with people. But basically, you can ask them about their kids, where they're living, if they like living there. Uh, there's tons of resources that you can use or, you know, we can all brainstorm together. But you can ask them about their job. What do they do for a living? Do they like doing it? How long have they been doing it for? What's a typical day look like for them? Um, if they could have any job, what job would they have? Then you can, oh. My husband's calling me. Sorry, honey. Um, then the last one is, is interests. Or wait, no, recreation. Hi. <laughs> so recreation. What do you like to do for fun? Do you have any vacations planned? What's your plans for the holidays? Are you staying in town? You know, just, I mean, once you start getting your creative juices flowing, like, and this is usually good to think about after a workout, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, um, because you're more productive after a workout, you know, once you start getting the ball rolling, you'll be like, oh, you always have a question to ask. Or if they answer something, you can just say this, tell me more about that. What a great phrase to say, right? Because then it just opens up the door and what do people love to talk about? People love to talk about themselves, right? We always are so worried about being interesting when really no one like, sorry, no one gives an S about you. Like you're, you're not as important as people, like as you think you are, right? We all think we're like the most important thing in the world, but when it comes to building relationships, it's kind of you second and them first. And then the law of re reciprocity is that they'll, they will ask you things back unless they, they are an a-hole themselves. So <laughs> naturally you'll ask them how they're doing, you ask them about their job, they'll ask you about what you're doing, and then you'll have an opening to say, you know, you have your full-time job, and then you can also say, oh, you know, I've been getting back into my health and fitness, or I do this health and fitness thing on the side. And either they'll totally ignore it, or they'll be like, oh man, I really need to work out some more. Or you can ask them if, you know, questions about like, are, do they like to be active? Are they working out? Like, you know, you just make it normal, you know? Like once you're already having a conversation with somebody, it's not weird to be like, oh, so, you know, what do you do to stay active? Or like, do you work out? Or, you know, and through this conversation, you are going to learn their sign. Not their astrological sign, <laughs> but the acronym sign, which is their strengths, their interests, their goals, and their needs. So through conversation, you may find out that they don't really like their job or that they're always tired or that they're super busy and they, you know, they can't keep up or, you know, or that they, they, they're miserable, they don't feel good or whatever, you know, things are going to come out naturally and you just have to kind of be able to, you know, take things and read between the lines and see an opportunity to help. Because what we have to offer, and you need to believe this at your core being, I think all of us do, so I better be preaching to the freaking choir, but at the core of everything, right, outside of our kids, outside of our job, outside of everything else, we have to take care of ourselves first. Because if you're not okay, you can't take care of anybody else. So health and fitness will never, ever, ever, ever go out of style right? Like this, there will always be a need for it. People always want to be happier, younger, have more energy. They want to feel good. They want to lose weight or, you know, feel their best, right? 
They like, that's never going away. So know what you have to offer. Like I, and I'm talking about mindset, setting yourself up before the invite, because believe it or not, even through a text, people can feel your confidence. People can tell that if, you know, and, and that's you, like you being in congruence with the things that you are saying you want to do and you actually doing them. I'm not going to get into that rant. You can watch some of my live videos lately. Um, but after Summit and Sean T's speech, I am like, I'm like on one, right? You've got to be, you got to be living your glass house and meaning that the things that you do when no one else is looking should be joined in with the things that you're saying. So. Okay, with all of that, let's say, you know, and, and if you're, if you are forming like two to five people a day, I'm just giving you a number. I always recommend the 10 times rule, right? So not a specific number, but just do more than you think you should. <laughs> because if let's say you invite, you know, you're talking to two people a day and you're forming them at the end of the month, that's like 60, 65 people, right? That's a lot of people that the next month you can go and invite them. So this is, this is where the five step invitation process comes in. Either I, like I, I swear you guys behind the scenes, this is like, this is the unsexy stuff. This is the stuff that no one else really wants to do. You know, as I know it's hard to believe sometimes, but sometimes people just want to be like, I'm going to make this great post. And then all these people are going to respond and it's going to be awesome. That only works if you're like Crystal on our team. <laughs> Love you, Crystal. Um, but for most of us, right, you, you, like, you have this great thing that you post, and then it's like crickets. And you're like, where the hell is everybody? Like, why don't you want what I have? Right? And so then you start telling yourself and, and justifying that, like, no one wants to do a challenge group with me. No one's interested in this. Blah, 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 blah. Nah, babe. You got to do the work. You got to do the stuff that other people aren't willing to do. And you know what people aren't willing to do? People are not willing to go and private message people invites. Why? Because I know, because I was one of them, right? And you'd be surprised. Like anybody that's, you know, that feels like they can't get any traction is because they're not having behind the scenes conversations. So. If you're lucky enough and people are interested in your call to action post, so you, you know, posting your before and after photo or maybe sharing somebody from the teams and inviting them to your next challenge group and people are interested, you're going to go with the same script. Same thing if you have someone in person, like this, this is the process, you guys, like your personality is going to be plugged into the, these five steps. And you may say certain things in your own voice because it should sound like you. But I want you to know that when I started this five-step invitation process, I'll be the first to admit it felt really cheesy and it felt inauthentic. But until you find your own voice, you can copy this verbatim. Like I have this on screen share and I think I just posted this in our um, team page with the Google Docs. But you, I mean, like, this is my home girl. This is, this is why you need a success partner. I'm just saying. My success partner's upline um, helped her craft these. And so these are the way, like, these are, like, conversation openers, right? And sometimes I really do post these verbatim and then just kind of change a couple words around so they sound like me. So utilize these resources, whether it's the actual five-step, like this one, or the scripts that I just posted in our group today. You know, figure out, like, copy some of them, you know, make your own document or take an Evernote and, and copy and paste them in there, whatever, you know, so you have something for you that you can, you can have in your back pocket so that you feel confident in inviting people, okay? So the first step is the initial invite. And it'll go something like, you know, like they have this, this verbiage where it's like, hey, so-and-so, I don't know if this is for you or not, but I was hoping you could help me. I'm looking for five new people who want to get started losing weight over the next 21 days. And I was wondering if you might know anyone that is interested or anyone that might be interested. And that's a way that you can invite without feeling like you're being pushy. But for me, I mean, I'll do invites and I'll say something along the lines of like, you know, I'll compliment the person or tell them that I really want to, you know, get to know them better. And I'll tell them, you know, like we have a really positive and uplifting, you know, like 
group of people and I would love for them to be a part of it. And I'm, you know, I'm sorry if this sounds like it's coming out of the left field, but I just, you know, thought maybe this might be something that you'd be interested in. Let me know if you want more information. So you just started off in that kind of way where it's, you're not like giving them like a five page essay on what challenge packs are and which ones are on sale. The, the write this down. If you're, if you're still new to inviting, Never give away the price. That, this is like the equivalent of a girl giving out her goodies on the first day. Like, you, like have some pride. <laughs> Don't give away your goodies. Telling the price to someone is immediately going to shut them out, in my opinion. Because I feel that we base a lot of our decisions on emotions. And when you start putting facts and figures and, and, and logical thought into it, we will we'll just shut it out. We'll be like, that's too much money. Most people do that, right? So if you, if you do an invite and, and, uh, or you do a post and someone says, how much is it? Or you, know, you do your personal invite and they go, yeah, sure. Um, how much is this going to cost? This is how you de-escalate the situation, right? You can be like, oh, great. You know, if you, it really depends what you're looking for. Would you mind if I asked you some questions to figure out what will best fit your needs? Or something like that. Yeah? So take control of the situation because you're in charge. You're in the driver's seat. You're the coach. You know where this conversation is going. And you need to know where their heart is. You need to know where their mind is. You need to know more about them before you just give them all the information, right? Um, so, and that, the, the, that's the tips, right? Don't overwhelm them with too much information. You know, just ask them if they want more information. Will people ignore you? Sure. Right? Sure. It's a numbers game. Like, I was talking to Shivana before this, and I told her that, you know, I don't know if you guys know this about me. I think all of you know, but, um, you know, I used to be a, a payroll administrator, but before that, I was a uh, staffing coordinator, and so I recruited for a temporary staffing company. And <laughs> so if you've ever worked for a temporary staffing company, you know that these people are, they're shaky. <laughs> they're very, like, it's, it's a numbers game, right? So if we had an order to send 10 people to a distribution center, right, we'd always have just a couple people in our back pocket because we knew even though these 10 people swore on their, like, their mama's life that they were going to be there, something's going to happen, right? People will say a lot of things, but something's going to happen. So, you know, like, why was I making that point? I think I was making that point to let you know that, you know, keep talking to more people. Like, even if someone says yes, even, even if they seem like, oh, yeah, I was talking about if people ignore you, um, you know, just keep talking to more people. Like, if you're only, like, inviting two people a day and nothing's happening, dude, up your game or reach out to one of us, or screenshot your conversations and post it in the group. Like, we are here together as a team. Like, together, everyone achieves more, right? And so you have so many people with different personalities and different perspectives, and we can help each other feel successful. But I will just say that when you, what, what is in Sandy Max 30, when you feel like not, when you feel like not doing one more, you do three, right? So when you don't feel like talking to one more person, you talk to three more people. I'm just saying, okay? So it even gives you the step on if they ask about price and then how to bridge it if they're interested and want more information. You basically just ask them if you can ask them questions. So step two, this is the step that you are going to spend the most time on, okay? Like this might take a couple days if you're on Messenger. Um, if you get them on the phone, like make sure you write down a handful of questions or if you're in person with them, like don't be afraid to pull out a notebook. Like it's going to make you look official. I'm just saying, right? You'll be like, oh, I, I just, I want to make sure that I don't forget anything. So you can use these sample questions. Um, there, where's the one that Ruthie gave me? Uh... Oh, this is still inviting, inviting through Facebook. Oh, these are the ones. See, I highlighted one because I just used it, and I copy it and pasted it. <laughs> but she, and, and you can look at these, and you can see if this is your style, but this is the one that Ruthie gave me. 
And, um, you know, she even starts with being like, tell me about your current health and fitness goals. What do you struggle with most? And most of the time people will just give you like a generic at the surface answer. It's kind of like when people ask you, Hey, how you're do how, how you do, <laughs> Hey, how are you doing? And, uh, and people just say good. Right. So that's why I asked you guys at the beginning. I was like, no, how are you really doing though? Cause you're just giving me the generic answer. So, um, sometimes I'll throw this in there and sometimes I won't. So it's up to you, but Having them to start peeling back the layers early, it might scare some people off, but it might really like, it might be a really good thing for, for certain people to really stop and think, okay, well, why do I want to lose these 10 pounds? You know, so saying something along the lines of, I totally understand, you know, that's great that you want to lose 10 pounds, but why do you want to accomplish that goal? Like, what's that deep why that almost makes you want to cry? Like, and, and I wouldn't suggest using this for dudes. Just saying. Um, this is mainly for a woman thing because <laughs> we're more emotionally inclined. But, you know, saying something along the lines of, you know, not just because you want to look good, but like deeper than that. So the, the responses I've gotten when I ask this question are like people saying that they, they're not able to play with their kids. Like they can't keep up and play with their kids. And that makes them really sad. Or that they've never really felt confident in their body before and they want to feel strong because that would help them feel mentally strong and, and raise their standards of how other people treat them. Like you just don't know what people, someone's going to say, right? So unless you ask the question. So you can totally, you can totally go that route. And then, um, I love all of these, like you might, they might not be in this order, but like sometimes like we'll immediately go into, um, like, what do you feel like is your biggest struggle with nutrition and fitness? And then that way I can kind of determine, okay, what, what direction should I take this conversation? Should I start with nutrition? Should I start with fitness? Because what you're trying to do is build a case for yourself. <laughs> To be honest, right? You're trying to figure out like what their needs are. What do they struggle with so that you have a way? Because if I get up, like I'm ready. Like this is me. This is me in a conversation. Because I know someone's gonna say Shakeology is too expensive, and I'll be like, poo, poo, poo. Like I already got my, I already got my moves ready, right? Because they'll tell me things like, oh, I eat out like every single night. Or, um, I drink two monsters a day, or, um, I don't take any multivitamins, you know, like they'll, they'll tell you things that are, are reasons for you to be like, oh, Shakeology would be perfect for you. Right. And then of course you're going to ask them about fitness for me. The fitness stuff is fitness stuff, right? It's like, normally these are my main go-tos. Like I think, you know, if someone's new to their fitness journey, 21 day fix, 21 day fix. That's like normally my recommendation. Um, but if you hear certain cues, like, you know, what, what physical enjoy or what physical activities have you enjoyed doing in the past? And they say, Oh, I used to love dancing or, you know, oh, I really hate working out. I actually don't enjoy anything. Then you have in your back pocket, you're like, cha-ching. I can offer them country heat. I can offer them size. I can, you know, offer them BOD. Like if they're like really wish washing on what they want, you know, so they can try different programs. Um, but take as much time as you need to. Take as much time as you need to. Especially if you're doing this on Messenger, this might span over a couple days and you'll find that you know people get busy and then they'll answer a couple of your questions and then they'll just stop responding, which I will take you to the bottom of this document that is in the Google Drive that I posted earlier. Um, where's her objections? Hey girl, hey, where's your objections? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, maybe I forgot to put it in here. Anyways, I'll have to audit that. But there's a way to overcome objections. I mean, not objections, but if like the conversation goes stale, and you can, um, oh, where is it? I'll have to find it. Oh, hey, look, there's that video. Um, I'll, I'll uh, edit this document. Cause I think I'm missing it, but you could like, if the conversation goes stale during step two, um, while you're asking these questions, then, um, you can just send them a quick message and mean like something along the lines of like, Hey girl, how's it going? Like, um, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure you got my last message. I know for me, I miss a lot of my Facebook messages. So, you know, just let me know. And then, and then you can resume the conversation. 
Um, so this is where I, I defer off of what um, Ruthie put together for this. Because uh, to me, this is a lot of information. It, it hasn't worked for me personally. So this is why I went back to the OG version. So, and you can ask them questions in this interview section too. And then also you can ask questions from here. Health assessment questions, um, get to know your customer. Like, so you'll find like what set of questions that work for you. And this is, you guys, like you're leaders, you're the CEO of your own business. So you can start making your own scripts for your own teams, right? Um, I'm just the world's laziest. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to speak that into uh, reality. I, I just procrastinate on those kinds of things, but I'm working on it. Um, so step two, you take as much time as you need to. You can never ask enough questions. Once you feel like you have asked enough questions, this is my favorite. And this is the bridge between step two and step three. And this is from the book Go Pro. So write that down. Go Pro by Eric Worre. I don't know how to spell his last name. Sorry. <laughs> you could just write Go Pro book because if you just type in Go Pro, you're going to see the canvas. So Go Pro talks a lot about this verbiage. And I really, really love this verbiage because you kind of put it back on that person. And this is you taking control of the conversation. So let's say you've asked them enough questions and you can say something along the lines of this or your own verbiage, but it says something along the lines of, listen, I still don't know if this is right for you, but it sounds like it is. When I'm asking these questions, it's to help me listen and to know if this is something that's right for you and will help you in your life. Just to make sure this is something you're willing to invest in, notice how these next two words are bolded. If I sent you a quick video uh, about the program that I have in mind for you, would you have three minutes to watch it? And I know I'm kind of going against what this shows here, which is another reason I need to write my own scripts. But you know what I'll do is when I ask them questions, either it'll be very apparent to me personally that I don't really need to give them an option. This, this person needs to start off with a 21 day fix. Like, you, you got to start off with a 21 day fix. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, or you might, it might be apparent that, um, or, or you might be like, oh man, like maybe the, you know, country heat or size might be good for them. I want them to be able to pick it out for themselves or maybe 21 day fix or pile. And so then I will change the verbiage to something like if I sent you two videos of the programs that I have in mind for you, would you have six minutes to watch them? And then I put in parentheses, they're about three minutes each. And you wait for them to answer. And you know what most people say? They say, yes, sure. And then what do you want to do immediately? You're like, mm, here, <laughs> right? Like you wanna, you wanna give them everything. Hold on, hopefully I'm not super dark right now. I'm gonna open up my lights a little bit. Um, but again, you, you are in control. You're driving this car, baby. It's you. You're the CEO. You're the one in control. You're confident. You know what you have to offer is amazing. And you have so many people to talk to that you can't be wasting your time. Okay? That's the mindset. So once they say yes, then you go, oh my gosh, great. What time in the next 24 hours do you think that you can watch them um, so that I can follow up and see what you thought? or something along those lines. I have yet for someone to be like weirded out that I asked that question. It just shows that you, you mean business, right? Like you wanna help this person and you want to make sure that both of your schedules coincide so that when you follow up with them, it's not a surprise. And if they still ignore you, then they still ignore you. You have the option though. I've done, I've done this both ways. You can continue to speak in the messenger, in Facebook messenger or email or whatever, um, or, you know, you can be like, you can schedule a phone call with them. Ooh, that deserves the pinky. So you can schedule a phone call with them and then, and then you can discuss what they thought of the video, like in, in live and living color. <laughs> um, so side note to that. So if you're like, uh, okay, what videos do I show them? This is what I'm going to tell you. And I know in the five step, it says it too. Um, 
but don't explain the programs to them. Like you can give them bits and pieces, but let these videos do the explaining for you. So let's say you wanted to show them the 21 day fix challenge pack. I just type in whatever program I'm thinking of and I type in challenge pack and bang, bang, bang. It's there. I click it. Are you serious about wanting to lose some weight? It starts playing. I stop it. <laughs> you click share. You click copy. You can control C or whatever. Copy, copy the link. And then, and that's what you're going to send them. And then you can, you know, you can say, Hey, this is the 21 day fix. I think this would be good for you because give them a little bit of spiel about why you think it would be good for them and send the link. So you can do that. And then, then, you know, you can also look for a Pio challenge pack. Like you can look for whatever programs you think would be good for them. I like to limit it to two because once you start being like, here's three, then it, you know, it's easier to be like, do you want the red or the blue one? Right. So of being like, do you want the red, yellow, or green? You know, then you just, it's too many options. Um, okay. So we're, we're moving along. We're chugging along. We've sent them, we've sent them the videos. So it even gives you kind of a script of what to say. Great. So you can watch this by tomorrow at three. So go ahead and watch these videos. You include the links. Um, and I'll follow up with you at that time or, you know, just make it sound like you. If this sounds way too robotic for you, then make it sound like you, but have the same essence. And if you really are like, I don't know what to say, then copy and paste it. Cause I definitely have, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with taking everything verbatim until you feel more comfortable. Okay. Here's the step four. So this is you following up. They, they, you're assuming that they watch the videos either, you know, some people can watch them right away and some people watch them, you know, a day later. So then you go, Hey, so, and so did you have a chance to watch the, the video or videos? And then they'll say, um, yes or no. And then you ask them like, these are specific to the ones that they recommend. Um, but my favorite thing to ask them, my favorite thing to ask them is, uh, what did you like best? <clears throat> so I ask them, what do they like best about the video? Um, and then I'll ask like, so does this look like something you're willing to invest in or do you need more information? And that's my favorite one. If you were at Super Saturday, I, that, was the, that was the quote, right? What was it from Janelle Summers? Which you guys, if you didn't go to Super Saturday, the video is in your back office and you can watch it. What did she say? Hold on. I just want to be sure that I don't. Do, 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 do. Oh, she said, um, so, or you can say something like, you know, does this look like you're willing to invest in, or do you need more info or, you know, are you ready to give this a shot or do you need more information? Like you choose your verbiage, right? Like this is basically like you getting down on one knee and being like, all right, are we going to do this or not? Like you can get fit or not? <laughs> you can be a coach or not? And so then if they're like, yeah, or they're like, how much is it? Um, which typically comes after they've watched a video, they know it's going to cost something. So then you can say something along the lines of this. Now, this is just my personal preference. <laughs> I, I didn't highlight that bottom one because that one makes me feel weird. <laughs> that one makes me feel like a salesperson, so I forego that language. Um, and I'll tell you what I say, but this, you, this is what you'll essentially say, either in a message or in person or on the phone or whatever, however you're closing the deal. Um, you go, you know, hey... Uh, it sounds like this is something you're ready to do. Or if they say, I'm, I'm good. Like I'm in, let's do this. And you can go, okay, great. So what we're going to do is we're going to enroll you with a challenge pack, which comes with a complete fitness program. And I always like to include parentheses. So I like to like put my own information in, which is like, you're going to get seven workouts. You're going to get a bonus, uh, workout specifically from, uh, because you're working with me. Um, you'll get a complete and then then the next thing will say you'll get a complete fitness and nutrition guide. Um, so this is how you're going to learn how to, you know, count your calories or count, like figure out how much portion control you need. Um, 
you'll have some recipe ideas, you'll have a workout calendar, you'll have a, a way to track your stats. Um, then you'll get your first month of Shakeology. And then in parentheses, I'll say something along the lines of like, you know, this is going to replace a meal um, that's already in your budget. So it's going to be about $4.33 a day. And uh, so this should be something that you're already, already going out to eat or, you know, you're basically setting them in that mindset that this Shakeology is not going to be an added expense. It's going to be something that's going to replace something already in their budget. Um, and then I'll say, and then you'll get the accountability of me as your coach and our entire group. And, and you can say something about the challenge tracker or whatever. Um, so you basically give them all the information of your challenge pack and then you tell them, okay, you get all of that for the initial investment of $140. And then I'll even say something along the lines of like, and 130 of that is for the Shakeology, which we already, you know, determined is going to be something that's already in your budget. So realistically you're going to be only paying ten dollars for this challenge and then after that you'll have your invest your uh you'll just have the investment of shakeology each month and then again i'll say something about you know if you want to get it paid for um or you want it at a discount you know we'll talk more about that in a couple weeks um and so then I'll finish it off with saying, you know, so what flavor of, or what's a good email for you and what flavor of Shakeology would you like to start off with? And so that's how I'll do it. Um, you know, this is just, this is just a process. Don't take this as like, this is the only way to invite. Um, as far as the details of the questions you ask or the things that you talk about, because you could be, you could figure out, oh my gosh, this person really needs a kickstart and they really need like, um, you know, like a 21 day fix kickstart challenge pack, which is with the three day refresh. So, you know, it, it's not going to be black and white is basically what I'm saying, right? It's not going to be black and white. So everyone's going to tell you different things and you're going to uncover different things and you'll have different recommendations. Um, so those are things that you can talk about. Now, this is my favorite way to, um, you know, seal the deal and enroll people. It's to use the mobile, uh, the mobile track or uh, hi, <laughs> um, I'm on my low carb day of day one. So sorry if I'm a little bit spacey. Um, so this is, this is what I like to use. I like to use the um, Coach Mobile app. And I just type that into Google, and it, it pops up for me. Or I think you can get to it from Team Beachbody. But I'll go to the Coach Mobile app. Uh, I'm already signed in here, but it'll have you sign in like you're going to sign into your back office. So just use your Coach email address and your password. And then you can select yes, and then um, you can enter someone's personal information. So this is why I like to do this, because look what happens here. If someone already has an existing account, it'll tell you. What? It'll tell you. Because I, <laughs> I've learned this many, 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 many times that... If I send someone a link and they already have been assigned a coach, like that, that person's going to get your commission. So um, I didn't do all that work to just to give it to someone else. So I, you know, even if you need to send them a link, um, you know, go on here really quick and see if their email's tied to somebody else because it'll tell you. However, side note, side note, if you're going to enroll somebody as a new coach and they already have an existing account, um, I'm pretty sure you can just, you can click it. Hi, click it. Oh. Oh, it's unavailable. But anyways, you can, you can enroll someone. So basically this kind of, this is kind of scary though, right? So, um, if someone already has a customer account though, and you do this and they're going to sign up as a coach, whoop, you can take them. So you can't, Send an enrollment email to someone that's already an existing customer, but you can send an enrollment new coach email. So they have to sign up as a coach, and then it'll be tied to you, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. I, I'm not going to – will someone tell me if you want me to see this walkthrough? It's pretty self-explanatory. 
And then you can see all the ones that you sent and they didn't pick them up. And then you can see people that started them but never finished. And then you can also see people that completed them. Da, 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 da. Can you tell I really like this? <laughs> so I've sent a lot of people enrollment emails. Anyways, so that's my favorite, that's my favorite method, okay? But if you if you are like dead set on sending them a link, this is the website I like. I know there's a different one. Um, so you can use a different one if you like, but I like simple coach links. So you just need to know your coach ID, which will be in your back office. Um, but if you submit it, then I can copy and paste. Like if someone wants to do a free trial of Beachbody on demand, like I can, I can send them a link directly linking them to me for the club membership. Um, you can send them direct links to any of the challenge packs. This is mainly what I use it for. If someone wants a fitness program, you can't do an enrollment email that way. So you would have to give them a link. Or you can, um, you know, if they're interested in Energize or something like that, then you can just, you know, uh, hi, oh, I'm bad with Apple computers. <laughs> but you do, you, you right click and then you copy. Okay. Um, so basically, that's how the conversation goes. If you want to call them and walk them step by step, you can do that. Um, and, then it, and then it helps give you those enrollment forms. Oh, hey, look. <laughs> there, it's at the bottom of this, actually. So at the bottom of this five-step invitation document, you can, it gives you the situation. They didn't respond to step one or two. They didn't, you know, like what to say if, if you're following up. Because I'm sure you've heard that a lot. Follow up, follow up, follow up. And you're like, what do I say when I follow up? This will give you um, some type of idea what to say when you follow up with someone that kind of went silent on you. Um, okay, wow, that was a long time. I can talk really for a very, very long time. So... Are there any questions? Oh, wow, I'm like really in the dark. <laughs> I'm like crystal status right now. Let me turn on the light. That's gonna be creepy to watch as a replay. This is gonna be this like dark shadow telling you how to invite. <laughs> Anyways, was that helpful? Do you have any questions that come to mind? Okay, this is, I mean, this is, this is what I have to say about inviting. Stop being afraid of it, or not, don't be afraid of it, but just feel the fear and do it anyways. I need you to, like, think about if your coach had not invited you, if they had been too scared to invite you, especially those of you that had to be followed up. Right? Those of you that kept saying no, 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 ignoring, ignoring, right? Like, you have to think about, like, what, what did your coach do for you? And, you know, just because someone says no, it it's, doesn't mean forever. It just means no, not right now. And you just, you keep, you keep that relationship and, and you keep talking to them and you keep supporting them. And eventually they're going to hit their, their 12 o'clock moment where, you know, you're in the right place, right time, and they're ready for a change. And, and y'all know it, y'all know it. Like when it comes to holidays, for those of you that are mamas or you're a person that likes to give gifts and you broke as a joke, you make something happen, don't you? You figure it out. You, there are gifts underneath that tree or, you know, like if it's that important to you, you make it happen. So same thing is with this opportunity. I don't ever believe anyone when they tell me they don't have enough money. It's not true. Like, you know, it's like, it's your health. If, so, if, they, if your doctor told you you were going to die tomorrow, you'd figure something out, right? You'd be like, we're going to figure out surgery. We're going to figure out whatever we got to do. Like, we're going to figure it out. So that's the nitty gritty on inviting. Don't be scared of it. It's just like anything else that you've ever learned how to do. You're not going to be good at it at first. 
Okay. And for my coaches that are hitting like a wall, like you feel like you're inviting all the time, but you're not getting anyone to say yes. This is where you take matters into your own hands and you ask for some help and you screenshot your conversations and, and you figure out, okay, am I saying something wrong? Is this coming off the wrong way? Like let's problem solve together. But to just sit there and say, no one's interested. No one wants to join my team. No one wants to do a challenge group. I can't find enough people. You know, no one's got enough money. No one's got enough time. Those are all just bullshit excuses. Okay? Because there is an epidemic in this country. I'm getting all Carl Deichler. <laughs> there are 226 million obese or overweight people in our country. And even more than that, in my opinion, I don't even know the numbers on this, so we're just going to make it up. We're going to say 3 million <laughs> or we're going to say 500 million. We're just going to make up some numbers. But even more than that, the silent killer, okay, because heart attacks and strokes and, and heart disease are the number one killer in the entire world. And the factors into that, having heart problems or heart complications, it's your diet, it's your exercise, it's your genetics, but even more than that, it's your stress. It's how you handle stress. And y'all know that when you work out and you take care of yourself and you become a coach, if you're doing your vital behaviors and you're reading and you're becoming self-aware, you are decreasing your stress. Like I know how stressed out and like crazy I was before I became a coach. And because it's our job to be physically fit, like it is your, it's your job to be physically fit and take care of yourself, but it's also your job to be happy. It's your job to be happy. Like, how cool is that? It's your job to make sure that you're okay up here, right? And so, that, like, if you see someone that you don't really think they need fitness or they already do fitness, but they're just stressed to the nines, like, that's a person you invite, right? The people that you feel scared to invite that seem like they have their, their shit together, like they're perfect, those are usually the people that need the help the most, because they intimidate everybody because they have the stuff and they have the accolades and the recognition and the job and the nice things. And, and those are the people though, that will end up being like your most hardworking coaches because they know, they know what hard work is. And if you can just show them what it feels like to be happy and to be stress-free, you'll change the world. You'll change the world and you'll save lives. So that's, that's, my, that's my speech, my homework for you, because we can't just be like, yay, that was good, <laughs> and then sign off. We got to have some action steps. So your homework is to look at the business activity tracker and to fill it out every day this week, because I truly, 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 truly believe that every single one of us can do the bare minimum, which is talk to two people invite two people to the, to the next challenge group and to the coaching opportunity. And if you don't know where to plug them in, we'll figure it out. Just hook them in, just make up a date. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll magically whoosh, make a, make a challenge group appear, right? Don't be freaked out about just, just talk to people and we'll figure out the rest as we go along. Okay. So that's our goal. That's your challenge. That's your homework. Put, it, put on your big girl or big boy panties. I don't think there's any boys on here. <laughs> Let's go change some lives. Yay! Someone else say yay. Hallelujah! <laughs> okay, thanks for being on here. Love you all. Mwah. And we'll talk soon, okay? Bye!